Welcome back to Sega Genesis Quickies on the Sega Genesis Classic Game Console. I'm Wizworld 100, you're the viewers, and I'm the reviewer. Let's get started. In an odd and colorful world, anything can happen. Max DeCap, an evil boss, has taken control of this unusual planet and must be stopped. Chuck the Head, a headless mummy, rises up as the best hope of this strange world, and he will stop at nothing to defeat Max and free the planet. Brightly colored lands, unusual foes, and powerful and exotic weapons await you as you guide Chuck in his heroic battle in this side-scrolling spectacular! Hmm, not quite accurate. Did the idiot who write the story in the booklet even watch the intro to this game? I mean, it's the first thing you see. Also, exotic weapons? I'll get onto that if it actually existed in this game. Decap attack starring Chuck the Head, a deheaded, oh, I get it, mummy who has to save the world from the invasion of Max Decap's underworld army. Oh, the title makes sense now. And restoring the skeleton continent. Just roll with it, you're saving the world here. This is a side-scroller game where you go through a level to find the exit point. Along the way, you'll encounter hazards and enemies you can fight off by jumping on most of them, using potions that you pick up on the tombstone, using your face, what's wrong with your face? And if you can find it, a skull for Chuck to, ahem, <coughs> chuck at your enemies. It's really useful in this game, but you do lose the skull if you get hit, which sucks. There's seven levels divided into three parts, each with their own unique level design and hazards, such as instant death lava, scrolling stages, vertical climbs and drops, and swimming parts, which are somewhat annoying to play. In the third part in every level, you have a boss fight, most of which are pretty easy to beat, but that's not all. You have to also make sure that you find the hidden item within the level before you can leave. So don't get ahead of yourself about the item. Some are hidden away and others are on the way. When you complete each level, you get to play a bonus game that lets you collect potions, or most helpful, the one-ups. Now during the stages, you can find coins in the tombstones that you can use to play the bonus game. Oh, and don't worry about losing any coins or items you didn't grab if you died before picking them up, as the level stays exactly the way you left it when you die. Which is an interesting design, but can be a problem with the platforms not resetting and you not being able to get power-ups or health as the enemies don't drop them and they just keep respawning off-screen. Oh yeah, you pick up actual hearts, not like the ones in Zelda, so ooh, edgy. The amount you pick up is determined by how much health you set yourself with from the options. When you die, you start from the beginning of the stage you died in, but if you game over, you start all the way from the entire level you're on. But only for a limited number of times and your items are all gone. And if you want to change your controls, then tough luck because you can't do that if you also wanted to continue, so pick your layout wisely. Speaking of controls, for some reason the start button doesn't work, the attack and jump button are the same, and for some reason the pause is on the C button. Very strange, and I did everything I could think of to fix this. Change the control scheme? Nothing. Reset the game? Nothing. Unplugged and replugged expo? Nothing. Then I realized something after using the original controller. This is one of the few games that has a problem with a plugged-in controller. See, for some reason on some of the games, a plugged-in controller will confuse the game and cause inputs to not work properly. The only solution to this is to use the controllers that come with the system. I don't know why you'd give us an option to plug in our controllers if it has a problem understanding it, but it might be more for actual game cards. So after that, the game is actually more playable and less frustrating, although I have to say, I'm pretty impressed I made it as far as I did with the crippled control input. So, do I recommend Decap Attack? Yeah, I'd recommend it. Recommended! Overall, it was a nice game. I like the potion types you can use, the bonus game was interesting, and the levels for the most part are enjoyable, although controlling Chuck can be frustrating at points when he doesn't react quickly or when he's swimming. The game looks decent, kind of like the Alex Kidd game in this collection, but not as bland, but certainly dirtier. And the music is pretty nice to listen to overall. If you can find it, give it a shot. It's a nice short game to play, just don't lose your head over it.
Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more than you can see here, be sure to check out my Facebook and Twitter for updates on reviews and videos. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my YouTube channel and for more video game content for you to watch. Such as the videos I'm showcasing right now. Be sure to give a like and comment for feedback and check out my site LazyWorks Creations and River City Gamers for more content like mine. Links to all that goodness is right in the description or click the annotations if you're watching on YouTube. He can fly? You can fry?